Hello everyone, my name is Mark. I'm back again with another Atari VCS video. It's in my series, and this time what I'm going to be covering is the memory and storage upgrades. So this Atari can handle up to 32 gigs of memory. Mine came with 8, 8 gigs in it because I had the, the backer series of the machine. Um, but I wanted to upgrade it so that I would have more space for other operating systems to be able to run properly. And so I've got two 16 gig sticks of the G-Skill Rip Jaws series memory. And this is what I'm going with because I've used it before in other machines. I really liked its quality and its performance. That's kind of why I went with this. Other brands are fantastic out there. You can certainly go with whatever you want here. This also happens to be 3200 megahertz memory, which, you know, is not going to be fully utilized in this Atari since it doesn't have that fast of a bus and you can't overclock it so it's not going to be ever an advantage but at least it's not any slower and that's more important right there. Also worth noting is that this is paired memory so because they're coming together and Ripjaw generally will test and pair their memory properly you know that you've got two modules that are going to be very close in their performance. And for the Atari, this is important because it has dual channel memory in there. And by having paired memory, that dual channel memory is going to basically perform just slightly better than if it were mismatched or something. It, probably not a massive difference, but it's, it is technically there. And so I'm just going to go with it anyway here for my case. Now for the storage, I'm going with Western Digital Blue Storage. This is a two terabyte stick here. Now I've seen people going up to one terabyte because I did see some documentation saying that one terabyte was somehow the maximum. But when I was looking at an Atari document on how to upgrade your storage, they said that the maximum capacity was undetermined and that you could basically have whatever you want in there, whatever's available. And this was about the biggest thing that I could find. So I figured, let's just go with it and, and see if it works. It's kind of in my QA uh, testing DNA to, to find out. So we're going to test that out and see how it goes. Now, this video is not going to go super in-depth on how to tear down your, your VCS here. That's done in my teardown video. It's only going to talk about enough to be able to get you to where you need to go for this. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how this thing goes. Okay, so now we're going to start going into the Atari here. In, or, in order to do that, you're going to need a couple of tools. First, you're going to need a Torx T10 driver like this. And you want something that has kind of a longer end on it like this so that you can get inside the wells underneath the Atari a little bit easier. You'll also need to have a pry tool, something like this that has like a little notched and kind of angled end to it. This will just make it a lot easier to uh, to get underneath things and pry things up. And also there's a couple of latches inside that this is going to come in handy for, um, you know, for getting undone a little bit easier. Then you're also going to need to have a screw like this. If you're installing your extra storage anyway, you're going to need a screw. And this is one that has the very fine thread on it, all right? And so you're going to need something like this to be able to hold that in. If you don't already have one from other builds, you're going to want to definitely find some. Or you can use, there's some rubberized ones or plastic ones that you can also put into the, the little hole that holds the the memory or the, the storage down uh, and that'll work as well. I just happen to have a ton of these things around so I'm going to use that and then of course a, a screwdriver or, or whatever you know that that will match with that uh, screw if you need it. All right so first step is is to flip it over so we got the bottom side exposed now and we're going to use our Torx T10 to do this and to expose the screws you're going to just kind of flip up the little rubber feet here from the inboard side in order to expose each of them and so we're just going to unscrew each of them Okay, now that we've gotten those undone, now we can take uh, and flip this thing back around to the top. This is where that 
little blue tool here that I have is going to come in handy with this little pry kind of end here. So what you need to do now is you need to take off the front and back plates uh, that hold the, the two halves of the Atari together here. And so what you're going to do is you're just going to get this in right underneath the, the, the plate and you're just going to kind of pry it up. It's a little tricky to do sometimes there. First time, this one here is just being finicky. There we go. And once you get the top off, the bottom is part of it's going to come off. And the reason why you have to do it from the top down is because of these like little notches that uh, you can kind of see here uh, that there's there are basically some extra like little like clips on the bottom that hold into this here. And it's harder to get that off rather than doing it from the top. So that's why we're doing it from the top. You can do the same thing for the back. So we got both of them off. Once you get both of these off, now you need to be kind of careful about how you take the top off here. So what you're going to do is you're going to lift it up and you're going to roll it toward the front of the VCS. And the reason why you want to do that is because of this right over here. This is where your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth antennas connect in. And you just want, don't want those to get disconnected if you don't have to. But if you do, it's fine. You can always plug them back in. Watch my video on the on, on the uh, teardown and I can show you how to, to put those back on if they come off. Now that we have this uh, taken apart to this point here, um, if you want to just install storage, what you're going to do is you're going to take your module and you're going to install it into here. This is where your storage goes. Now you need to make sure that you get storage that has both notches on it here. Okay, see how you've got two notches taken out? You have to make sure it's got the two notches. If you only have just the one notch, it won't work. Now this does only have one notch built into it down here, but that, that still doesn't mean that you can use one with only that one notch. This is actually what's called a, um, a SATA SSD. And so you want to make sure that you have that. So all you have to do is just stick it in here, push it in firmly, and then you'll get your little you know, retaining screw or whatever it is that you have. You'll screw it in. And it doesn't have to be very tight, just tight enough to be able to keep this thing from moving and from this just kind of unscrewing on you. That's all you have to do. Okay, so now if you want to add in more memory, what you're gonna to need to do first is you're gonna to wanna to use a tool kind of like this one here to be able to get these little black levers lifted up. And if you, you can use a screwdriver or something or a fingernail on this one here, but the other one is gonna be a little more difficult. So if you have something that's got like a nice little angled end to it, you can kind of get in there and lift this thing up very easily. And then you can pull your ribbon cable out. The other side is a little bit trickier to do if you don't have the right tool, but it should come up nice and easy and you can pull the ribbon cable out. Okay, so now we have to get the six screws out that hold this, this top board here to the uh, bottom of your uh, VCS. So the first one is up here where the heat shroud is. And it doesn't look like it's going to come out, but that's okay. We just, we've got it loosened up. And the next one is underneath the light diffuser. And this is for the little Atari logo on the front. So we're going to take that one out. The next one is over here, just in between where your, your storage is and the fan. And then you've got three of them one, two, and three that are uh, also holding down this, this shield here, but they also hold the, the board down as well. So we're just gonna take that off and then we'll take off the shield.
And when you're taking off the shield, you want to make sure that you don't uh, hit these wires. So just kind of make sure that they kind of stay out of the way. The last screw comes off with it. Now we've got it freed. Now we can open it up. So we're going to carefully lift it and roll it again towards you. There goes our other screw. And then we'll move that out of the way. And now we can see where our memory is. To get the memory out, it's really simple. You've got clips on both sides. You're just going to pull them toward, to the outside. So they're going to go, you know, that one's going to go that way. And this one's going to go that way. And you just pull it out. Same thing with the bottom. You're just going to pull these little clips out. It pops up. You pull it out. To install your new RAM, you're going to just do the opposite of that. Okay, so make sure that it's it's set up properly here. They are keyed, so there's only one, one way to put it in, but you want to make sure it's nice and firm. It's pushed all the way in, and then press it straight down. And then do the same thing with your next one. Push it in there, make sure it's in there nice and firm, that you don't see any more of the metal, and then you're going to push it down. Make sure that the clips on the sides are fully clipped, and you should be done. Now we're going to just do the opposite of what we just did. So we're going to pull the bottom of our VCS back and then we're going to roll this thing forward very carefully. And then line up all of your screw holes. Make sure that they're all set. And then we will put all the screws back in. Okay, so we've got all those screws in now. Now it's we need to make sure that we put in our ribbon cables here. To do that, you're just going to put them into their little slot and then push down the little black lever. And you can kind of test it by giving it a nice little tug to make sure that it's in there. And remember when you put it in, make sure that you put it in nice and straight and it's not like off to an angle or something. You wanna make sure it's in there nice and firm that it, it's all the way in and then just push down the, the lever. Next, we're just going to flip this cover up. Top cover goes right down on top. And then what you wanna do is when you flip it up to the front, make sure this thing here is aligned. This is, this right here is your uh, diffuser for the front. Sometimes it could be kind of popped up like this. You just wanna make sure that it is aligned down like that and we're going to put our front cover on so making sure that we have the atari uh, on that side you'll put the bottom of it on first and then you're just going to push down on the top Oops. a little hard over there okay and then you're going to verify that everything over here is all connected that it's nice and even all the way across okay we're going to do the same thing on the back as well starting from the bottom side of it we're going to put that on first and then make sure that like all the little metal uh fittings over here are you know fit are going through the holes uh in the back plate and you're just going to then push it down as well and then make sure that everything is connected properly going all the way across and then we're going to turn it over and we'll screw in all the screws back into the back.
And now we're all done. That is it. Now it's time to test and see if it recognizes all of the RAM and the, uh, the storage. All right, so I'm gonna use OpenSUSE in order to uh, kind of determine how much RAM and storage that we actually have reported as being installed. And this is just running off of a little thumb drive on the USB port here, so it's, it's just real light duty, but uh, and you can get this free on the OpenSUSE site if you want. Um, but I'm just going to use the OpenSUSE Leap uh, Rescue CD, and uh, that'll get us into just a basic command prompt. Okay, so now that that's loaded up, I'm just going to... Well, again, there's no permissions on this. It's just a temporary kind of uh, install here. All right. First thing I'm going to check is how much free space we have for our memory. So we just do free dash G for gigabytes. It will show us how much we have. Now it shows here we have 29 total. Now that's accurate because the memory is actually shared memory between the GPU and our system. And it looks like it's taking three gigs just for the video memory and then the rest is for the system. So, so that, that checks out. So we have all 32 gigs of our memory uh, accounted for. And now we just need to see what we have for storage. So we're gonna do F disk. And we'll do dash L, and that should tell us everything here. Ah, there we go. At the very top, you'll see we have dev SDA is 1.8 terabytes, and you can see it's a WDC model, which is the Western Digital we just installed. So we have confirmed that we actually are able to see all of that space. So it looks like this was a success. We have all of our memory in there. We have all of our storage in there. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, this is exciting because now that means that I can start installing operating systems on there and I'll have plenty of space for them. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this, please do hit the like button and also consider subscribing to this channel because I do have more videos planned for the Atari VCS. I'd just love to share with you and I'd like you to be a part of that. Um, comments are also very much welcome and I generally try to reply to them as fast as I can so that uh, you know, if there's any good feedback there that uh, I can make improvements going forward. All right, well, happy computing with your new Atari.